Right, hello everyone. So last week you were planning your warning tale based on the pirate cruncher. And today we're going to start writing our own warning tale. For that, you're going to need all of your planning pages that you did last week about your characters and the warning. I saw lots of lovely examples on Padlet. And you can see I've copied one in here that Amy Penrose put up, well done. So you'll need all of those. And yesterday you would have been going over your text map, reminding yourself what your story is going to be. And that's all going to help you use and write your warning tale today. So let's have a look at the characters that we changed last week. There are three main characters in the Pirate Cruncher. We've got the old fiddler, who in my story I'm changing to a fairy. Captain Purplebeard, who receives the warning, who I'm changing to a princess called Sarah Silvershoes and the pirate cruncher themselves, the evil monster that the warning is about. And I'm changing that to a witch. So pause the video here, go back and look over your planning characters and see who you changed all your characters to. Remind yourself, remind yourself about the warning as well, okay? Okay, so let's have a look at my characters in a bit more detail. The first character, the old fiddler, I'm changing to this fairy. And last week, you would have drawn a picture of your character and you would have thought up some adjectives for that character. My adjectives were young, clever, and she's got a gold wand. All right. So the first sentence in the Pirate Cruncher introduces us to this character, doesn't, doesn't it? Let's have a look at this next slide to remind us. It says... Pirate Cruncher starts on a dark, eerie night. Outside the Parrot Inn, an old fiddler appeared. So my character is going to be the fairy. She's young and clever. Where will she be? And will it be a dark and eerie night? And these are all things that you're going to have to think about for that first sentence. So let's have a go. I'm going to carry on writing our first sentence here. You could still use the example in the Pirate Cruncher and stick with on a dark, eerie night if you want to. That's perfectly fine. However, I think I'm going to change mine up a bit and I'm going to start mine on a wet and stormy night. And where shall I be? Let's have a think. Maybe pause the video. Where else? could your character be appearing? In the Pirate Cruncher, it's outside the Parrot Inn. So pause the video again and have a chat with your grown-up. Where's your character going to appear and start talking and giving the warning? If you want to keep outside the Parrot Inn, that's perfectly fine, but you can change it if you want to. Okay, I've had a think and I'm going to say they're in a woods. So I'm going to say inside the whispering woods. And then I've got to tell my readers about my character. A young, clever fairy flu. There we go, that's my first sentence. So you, that's quite a lot of thinking you need to have a, have a go at thinking about. Are you going to keep a dark eerie night or are you changing it? Maybe you've got a bright sunny day. Maybe you've got a wet and snowy afternoon. Who knows? Love to see your first sentences up on Padlet later. Okay, so once you've done that, you then need to go and have a think about your other characters, and look at your other planning sheets. So I had Princess Silver Shoes and she loves shoes. And I had a scary witch who hates princesses and eats those shoes. So that's what my warning is gonna be. This print, this witch, 
not going to like princesses. If she goes anywhere near her, she's going to be shoes. But eats, that's not a very interesting verb, is it? Last week, we were looking at lots of different words that mean the same thing. So I'm going to look at eats and have a think. What other verbs can we use instead of eats? Pause the video again, have a chat with whoever's around or have a think. What other verbs can you come up with? Let's see, let's uncover the ones I've got on my screen here. I've got crunches. Did you get that? Well done if you did. Gobbles. I've got slurps. And I've got munches. Now there are lots of different ones, so I'm sure you might have come up with some that haven't come, that I haven't got. I really like gobbles. So instead of eats, I'm going to use gobbles. And I'm going to use that for the title of my book. Instead of being the pirate cruncher, I'm going to call my witch the shoe she eats shoes. Gobbler. So that is going to be the title of my book. Shoe Gobbler. Pause the video in a minute. Have a think about what your warning is. What does your evil character, scary character do? Did you come up with a title for your book that was based around what it does and the verb that you found? Okay, right. So you can pause the video here to have a think about the title of your book. So I'm gonna add here I've got my first sentence that I wrote earlier. I'm going to add in the title of my book, The Shoe Gobbler. Okay. At the top here, I've got the first, whole first paragraph of The Pirate Cruncher, so we know what we need to write next in our story. The pirate cruncher went on a dark, eerie night outside the parrot inn, an old fiddler appeared. He told Captain Purplebeard of an island filled with treasure. However, he warned the captain that the treasure was guarded by an evil monster who eats pirates for dinner. So we've written our first chapter. Uh, first sentence, haven't we? So we need to write the next sentence now. So we've got, on a stormy wet evening inside the whispering woods, a young clever fairy flew down. I'm going to go, he told Princess Sarah Silvershoes about a cave filled with shoes. All right. What do you think about my sentence there? I'm just adding a few extra lines to just so that it's a bit spaced out. Okay, what do you think? Have a think about, pause, pause the video, have a chat with your grown up. Have I written that sentence well? Could I make any changes to it to make it better? Right, hopefully you've spotted there that I've missed out my capital letter at the start of my sentence. That wasn't very good, was it? And I've lost, forgotten a few finger spaces here, haven't I? So I'll add those in. And I'm not quite 
quite sure if I've spelt this word here correctly. So I maybe didn't use my Fred talk when I was thinking about that. Okay. Did you spot all of those little mistakes that I made? Don't worry. Just whenever you write, just make sure you go back and reread it and check it for those capital letters, finger spaces, full stops. And if you're really challenging yourself, some lovely adjectives and verbs, okay? Right, so we've done two sentences. We now have to do our final sentence. So we've got, however, she... warned the princess cave was guarded by a scary witch who what did we say what did we say the the scary witch did can you have a think did you, can you remember back from my earlier slide? That's it, she hates princesses and falls up. There we go, I've written the first paragraph of my story. And that's what I want you to do today, is go back over your planning, think about your sentences, your characters, where they are, what the warning is, and have a go at writing your first paragraph. Introduce us to all of those three characters and the um, warning that is given. One other thing I want you to do, when you are writing in your book, I want you to write on a line like this and then leave a line blank then write on the line below that, okay? So we'll have one empty line between each line of your writing. This will really help you. If you have forgotten a capital letter, you can just, if you decide, let's say example, if you decided you wanted to suddenly change clever to silly, you just put a simple line through that and above it, you would write the new word that you wanted to change it to silly, okay? This gives you plenty of space to make those changes. If you find out, realize you made a spelling mistake, again, you just put a simple line through it, right above it, the new word. Okay, it will also help at the end of the week when we come back to edit our work, we'll have lots of space to edit our work. Okay, so wonderful, have a go. Love to see it on Padlet, your stories as you write them. Thank you.